ਅੱਜ ਮੈਗਨੈਟਿਕ ਇਫੈਕਟ ਆਫ ਕਰੰਟ ਐਂਡ ਮੈਗਨੈਟਿਜ਼ਮ ਦੀ ਇਸ ਕਲਾਸ ਵਿੱਚ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਸਵਾਗਤ ਹੈ ਅਸੀਂ ਆਪਣੀ ਪਿਛਲੀ ਕਲਾਸ ਵਿੱਚ ਮੈਗਨੈਟਿਕ ਫੀਲਡ ਬਾਰੇ ਡਿਸਕਸ ਕੀਤਾ ਸੀ ਜਿਸ ਵਿੱਚ ਇਲੈਕਟ੍ਰਿਕ ਕਰੰਟ ਅਤੇ ਇਸ ਨਾਲ ਐਸੋਸੀਏਟਿਡ ਵਰਕ ਵਰਕ ਲਾਸ ਸ਼ਾਮਲ ਸਨ ਅੱਜ ਅਸੀਂ ਮੂਵਿੰਗ ਚਾਰਜਡ ਪਾਰਟਿਕਲਸ ਉੱਤੇ ਮੈਗਨੈਟਿਕ ਫੀਲਡ ਅਤੇ ਇਲੈਕਟ੍ਰਿਕ ਫੀਲਡ ਦੇ ਪ੍ਰਭਾਵ ਬਾਰੇ ਪੜਾਂਗੇ ਅੱਜ ਦੀ ਕਲਾਸ ਨੂੰ ਤਰਤੀਬ ਵਾਰ ਸ਼ੁਰੂ ਕਰਨ ਤੋਂ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਮੈਂ ਅੱਜ ਦੇ ਲੈਸਨ ਦੇ ਲਰਨਿੰਗ ਆਬਜੈਕਟਿਵਸ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਨਾਲ ਸਾਂਝੇ ਕਰਨਾ ਚਾਹੁੰਦੀ ਹਾਂ ਆਫਟਰ ਦ ਕੰਪਲੀਸ਼ਨ ਆਫ ਥਿਸ ਚੈਪਟਰ ਦ ਸਟੂਡੈਂਟਸ ਵਿਲ ਬੀ ਏਬਲ ਟੂ ਡਿਸਕਸ ਦ ਸ਼ੇਪ ਆਫ ਦ ਪਾਥ ਆਫ ਅ ਚਾਰਜਡ ਪਾਰਟਿਕਲ ਇਨ ਅ ਯੂਨੀਫਾਰਮ ਮੈਗਨੈਟਿਕ ਫੀਲਡ ਇਫ ਵੀ ਐਂਡ ਬੀ ਆਰ ਪਰਪੈਂਡੀਕੂਲਰ ਟੂ ਈਚ ਅਦਰ ਡਿਫਾਈਨ ਦ ਲੋਰੈਂਸ ਫੋਰਸ obtain the equation for the force on a charge q in the presence of both the electric and magnetic fields in vector notation describe the motion of a charged particle in magnetic field as well as in electric field describe a cyclotron and explain its working state fleming's left hand rule Let us now continue our class on forces on charged particles in electric and magnetic fields. Before we introduce the concept, we shall recapitulate what we have learned about the electric field. In electrostatics, we have studied that a static charge produces an electric field. The electric field is a region or space around a static charge in which its electric effect can be felt the electric field intensity vector e is equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon not into q upon r square into unit vector r and the magnitude of the electric field at field point is given as e equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon not into q upon r square once the effective electric field e at a point is known the force on a test charge q0 at that point can be given as vector f equal to q0 into vector e let us analyze the path of charged particle in a uniform electric field let us consider a charged particle of charge plus q and mass m is moving with a velocity v along x axis in the absence of an electric field it meets the screen at point a let the charged particle be subjected to a uniform electric field of strength e acting along y axis due to electric field the charged particle experiences a force f equal to qe it is clear that the direction of this force is in the direction of electric field e that is along y axis similarly the acceleration a is along y axis which is equal to qe by m however the particle is moving along x axis but this acceleration being perpendicular to the motion of charged particle will not change the speed of the charged particle if x be the length of the region of the electric field then the time taken by the charged particle to traverse it is given by t equal to x by v let y be the displacement of the charged particle along y axis during time t that is when the particle is in the electric field then using the relation s equal to ut plus half at square we get y equal to 0 into t plus half at square which is equal to half at square which is equal to half of qe by m into t square or y equal to half of qe by m into square of x by v this gives x square equal to 2mv square upon qe into y or x square is equal to ky this is an equation of a parabola hence inside the electric field the charged particle moves on a parabolic path and on leaving the field 
it moves along a straight path which is tangent to the curved path. Let us visualize the path of charged particle in a uniform electric field. If the charged particle having charge Q is at rest or moving in the direction of electric field E, it experiences a force Q into vector E in the direction of E and hence the particle is accelerated in the direction of E. If the charged particle is moving opposite to the direction of electric field E, it experiences a force minus Q into vector E and hence it is retarded. But if the charged particle moves perpendicular to electric field E, it describes a parabolic path in the electric field and on leaving the field, it moves along a straight path which is tangent to the curved path. In order to define the motion of charged particle in magnetic field, first of all, let us deduce an expression for the force on a moving charge in a magnetic field. Let us consider a positive charge Q moving in a uniform magnetic field B with a velocity V. Let the angle between V and B be theta. Due to interaction between the magnetic field produced, due to moving charge or current and the applied magnetic field, the charge Q experiences a force which depends on these factors. One, the magnitude of the force F experienced by the moving charge is directly proportional to the magnitude of the charge. That is, F is proportional to charge Q. Secondly, the magnitude of the force F is directly proportional to the component of velocity acting perpendicular to the direction of magnetic field. That is, F is proportional to V sin theta. The magnitude of the force F is directly proportional to the magnitude of the magnetic field applied that is F proportional to B. Combining these factors we get F is proportional to Q V B sin theta or F equal to K into Q V B sin theta where K is the proportionality constant. Its value is found to be 1. Therefore, F is equal to QVB sin theta. Since force, velocity and magnetic field all are vector quantities. Hence, this relation indicates a cross product of vector V and vector B. Therefore, force F is equal to Q into magnitude of the cross product of vector V and vector B. Where in vector form, vector F is equal to Q into the cross product of vector V and vector B. Disha F, velocity V ate magnetic field de cross product disha hai, jo ki V ate B, dona de plane utte perpendicular hundi hai. Right hand rule, ja right hand screw rule rahi V is the direction prapt ki tija sakti hai. This magnetic force was first given by H. A. Lorentz. Therefore, it is called as Lorentz force. If we look at the interaction with the magnetic field, we find the following features. It depends on the charge of the particle, the velocity and the magnetic field. Force on a negative charge is opposite to that on a positive charge. The magnetic force includes a vector product of velocity and magnetic field. If velocity and magnetic field are parallel or anti-parallel, the force due to magnetic field becomes zero. Thus, the force acts in a direction perpendicular to both the velocity and the magnetic field. The magnetic force is zero if the charge is not moving, that is, only a moving charge experiences the magnetic force. The expression for the magnetic force helps us to define the unit of the magnetic field. If we take Q, F and V all to be unity and theta as 90 degrees, 
then the magnitude of magnetic field B is also unity. In general, we can say when the force of 1 Newton is acting on a unit charge moving perpendicular to the magnetic field with a speed of 1 meter per second, the magnetic field induction is 1 Newton second per coulomb per meter or 1 Tesla or T named after Nikola Tesla. Tesla is a rather large unit. However, a smaller unit is Gauss which is equal to 10 to the power minus 4 times of a Tesla. Do you know what is the value of the Earth's magnetic field in terms of Tesla? It is about 3.6 into 10 to the power minus 5 Tesla. If we take Q and V to be unity and theta as 90 degrees, the force becomes equal to magnetic field induction. That is, the magnetic field induction at a point in the field is equal to the force experienced by a unit charge moving with a unit velocity perpendicular to the direction of magnetic field at that point. If the charge particle is moving perpendicular to the direction of magnetic field, the force due to magnetic field becomes QVB. It means if a charge particle is moving along a line perpendicular to the direction of magnetic field, it experiences maximum force. The direction of this force can also be determined by Fleming's left hand rule. However, in general, the force experienced by a charged particle moving in space where both electric and magnetic fields are present is called Lorentz force. Based on the extensive experiments of Ampere and others, Lorentz suggested that when a charged particle carrying charge plus Q is subjected to an electric field of strength E, it experiences a force vector Fe, which is equal to Q vector E, whose direction is the same as that of E. On the other hand, if the charged particle is moving in a magnetic field B with a velocity V, it experiences a force vector Fm equal to Q into cross product of vector V and vector B. The direction of this force is in the direction of V cross B, that is perpendicular to the plane containing V and B and is directed as given by right hand screw rule. Due to both the electric and magnetic fields, the total force F experienced by the charged particle is the sum of the electrostatic force and the magnetic force that is vector F equal to Q into vector E plus Q into the cross product of vector V and vector B. The force Q into vector E plus vector V cross vector B is called the Lorentz force. Now tell me what would happen if V, E and B were collinear? When V, E and B all three are collinear, the charged particle is moving parallel or anti-parallel. The force due to magnetic field becomes zero and due to the electric force on the charged particle an acceleration vector A will be produced on the charged particle which is equal to Q vector E by M along the direction of electric field. As a result, there will be a change in the speed of charged particle along the direction of the field. Now, can you think what would happen if V, E and B are mutually perpendicular to each other? In this situation, if vector E and vector B are such that the net force is zero, then acceleration vector A is also equal to zero. It simply means that the particle will pass through the fields without any change in its velocity. Hence, magnitude of electrostatic force and the magnetic force are the same which gives velocity V as the ratio of electric and magnetic field intensities. 
This concept is used in velocity selector to get a charged beam having a definite velocity. We can extend the analysis for the motion of charged particles in a uniform magnetic field. Suppose a particle of mass m and charge q entering a uniform magnetic field B with velocity v making an angle theta with the direction of magnetic field. If we resolve V into two rectangular components, Vx acting in the direction of the magnetic field which is equal to V cos theta and Vy acting perpendicular to the magnetic field which is equal to V sin theta. For the velocity component Vx, the force acting on the charged particle due to magnetic field is equal to Q into cross product of vector Vx and vector B which is 0 because Vx is parallel to B. Hence, there will be no force on the charged particle in the direction of magnetic field. Thus, the charged particle covers the linear distance in direction of the magnetic field with a constant speed v cos theta. On the other hand, a negatively charged particle moves opposite to the direction of the magnetic field. On the other hand, for the velocity component Vy, the force acting on the charged particle due to magnetic field is vector F equal to Q into cross product of vector Vy and vector B. Therefore, the magnitude of the force F becomes Q Vy B sin 90 degree or Q V B sin theta. The direction of this force is perpendicular to the plane containing Vy and B. Since this force always remains perpendicular to Vy, therefore it does not perform any work. This velocity cannot change the magnitude of velocity Vy, but it changes the direction of motion of the particle. Due to this, the charged particle moves in a circular path in the magnetic field. The force F on the charged particle due to magnetic field provides the required centripetal force, that is Q Vy B is equal to m v y square upon r which is necessary for the motion of charged particle along a circular path of radius r. This gives v y or v sin theta as equal to b q r by m. Hence, the angular velocity of rotation omega of the particle in magnetic field would be equal to v sin theta by r or BQ by M and the frequency of rotation nu of the particle in magnetic field would be omega upon 2 pi that is BQ upon 2 pi M. We know that the time period is the reciprocal of frequency. Hence, the time period of revolution of the particle in the magnetic field would be equal to 2 pi M upon BQ. It is clear that frequency and time period do not depend upon velocity of the particle. It means all the charged particles having the same charge per unit mass but moving with different velocities at a point will complete their circular paths due to component velocities perpendicular to the magnetic fields in the same time. Though velocity components they combined effect current, ek charged particle, magnetic field which circular they nal nal linear path we cover karega. Pav, charged particle the path helical hovega. Ate is helical the axis, magnetic field the direction they parallel hovegi. The linear distance covered by the charged particle in the magnetic field in time equal to one revolution of its circular path is equal to 
Vx into T or V cos theta into 2 pi m by Bq. This linear distance is known as pitch of the helix. The cyclotron is a machine to accelerate charged particles or ions to high energies. It was invented by E. O. Lawrence and M. S. Livingston in 1931 to investigate nuclear structure. The cyclotron uses both electric and magnetic fields in combination to increase the energy of charged particles. As the fields are perpendicular to each other, they are called crossed fields. The working principle of the cyclotron is based on the fact that a positively charged particle can be accelerated to a sufficiently high energy with the help of smaller values of oscillating electric field. By making it to cross the same electric field time and again with the use of strong magnetic field. The frequency of revolution of the charged particle in a magnetic field is independent of its energy. Let me show you a cyclotron. It consists of two D-shaped hollow evacuated metal chambers called the Ds. These Ds are placed horizontally with their diametric edges parallel and slightly separated from each other in a strong magnetic field produced by two poles pieces N and S of strong electromagnets. The Ds are connected to a high frequency oscillator which can produce a potential difference of the order of 10 raised to the power 4 volts at a frequency equivalent to 10 raised to the power 7 hertz. The two Ds are enclosed in an evacuated steel box and are well insulated from it. The magnetic field is perpendicular to the plane of the Ds. There is a place of ionic source or positively charged particle. The positive ion to be accelerated is produced at that place. Zyada tarta charged particle though semicircular metal containers yani Ds they under move karda hai. In a metal containers under particle shielded renda hai. Ate S utte electric field act nai kar pondi. Is tara positive particle D wal accelerate honda hai. Ate is te under A field free space which pohat janda hai. Hun A constant speed nal chalda hai. पर याद रवे, इस पार्टिकल उत्ते मैग्नेटिक फील्ड एक्ट कर रही है, जेडी डी दे अंदर इस नो सर्कुलर पाथ विच कुमाउंदी है। होन जब पॉजिटिवली चार्ज पार्टिकल दे सेमी सर्कुलर पाथ डिस्क्राइब करंदा टाइम, इलेक्ट्रिक ऑसिलेटर दे हाफ साइकल कंप्लीट करंदे टाइम दे बराबर होवे, ता दोना डीज विच पार्टिकल दे पहुंच दे ही दोनों डीज दे पोलैरिटी पलट जांदी है जा रिवर्स हो जांदी है हुन पार्टिकल दूजी डी वल एक्सेलरेट होंदा है अते इस विच होर ज्यादा स्पीड नाल एंटर करता है जिन्नी वारी पार्टिकल एक डी तो दूजी विच जांदा है उन्नी ही वारी उस उत्ते इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड कम कर दी है इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड दा साइन पार्टिकल दे सर्कुलर मोशन मुताबिक अल्टरनेटली चेंज होंदा रहंदा है इस तरह पार्टिकल हमेशा ही इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड द्वारा एक्सेलरेटेड रहंदा है हर वारी एक्सेलरेशन पार्टिकल दी एनर्जी वधा देंदा है एनर्जी वधन नाल हर वारी सर्कुलर पाथ दा रेडियस वध जांदा है इस तरह पार्टिकल दा पाथ स्पाइरल बन जांदा है पर डिफ्लेक्टिंग प्लेट्स दे अक्रॉस इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड अप्लाई करके एक्सेलरेटेड पार्टिकल नो एक विंडो राही डीज विचों बाहर कड्या जा सकता है। 
let us consider that initially 1d is at negative potential and the second d is at positive potential. Let the positively charged particle be accelerated towards the first d which on reaching inside the d moves with a constant speed v. But due to perpendicular magnetic field of strength b, the particle describes a semicircular path of radius r. Here the magnetic force on the charged particle provides the required centripetal force that is QVB which is equal to mv square upon r where m and q are the mass and charge of the particle. This gives radius of the semicircular path r equal to mv upon bq. The time spent by the particle inside a d t is equal to pi r by v which is equal to pi m upon bq. This time is a constant quantity and independent of both the speed of the particle as well as the radius of the circular path. Moment the particle arrives in the gap between the two d's, the polarity of the two d's is reversed and the particle enters in the second d with a greater speed. However, this increased speed remains constant within the d and the particle will describe a semicircular path of a greater radius due to perpendicular magnetic field and again will arrive in the gap between the two d's exactly at the instant the polarity of the two d's is reversed. This way the charged particle will go on accelerating every time it comes into the gap between the d's and will go on describing circular path of greater and greater radius. Finally, it acquires a sufficiently high energy. If capital T is the time period of revolution of the particle or the time period of oscillating electric field, the time period capital T is equal to 2T which is 2 pi m upon bq. Hence, the frequency of rotation of the particle nu would be equal to 1 upon t that is bq upon 2 pi m. This is known as cyclotron frequency and also as magnetic resonance frequency. And the cyclotron angular frequency is omega c equal to 2 pi nu or bq by m. If V0 and R0 are maximum velocity and maximum radius of the circular path followed by the positively charged particle in cyclotron, then Q V0 B is equal to M V0 square upon R0 or V0 is equal to B Q R0 upon M. This gives maximum kinetic energy of the positive ion which is equal to half mv0 square which is equal to b square q square r0 square upon 2m. However, maximum kinetic energy acquired by a positive ion can be expressed in another form. If v is the potential difference between the two d's and n the number of times the positive ion crosses the gap between the two d's before leaving the d's then maximum kinetic energy is also equal to n into v q. If small n is the number of rotations completed by the positive ion before the radius of its circular path becomes equal to that of d's that is capital N is equal to 2n then the maximum kinetic energy can also be expressed as 2n into vq. Let us have a look on the limitations of the cyclotron. When a positive particle is accelerated by the cyclotron, it moves with greater and greater speed. As the speed of the particle becomes very high, 
the positive particle will take longer time to describe semicircular path than the time for half cycle of oscillating electric field as a result of it the particle will not arrive in the gap between the 2d's exactly at the instant the polarity of the 2d's is reversed and hence will not be accelerated further an electron cannot be accelerated by the cyclotron because the mass of the electron is small and a small increase in energy of the electron makes the electrons move with a very high speed as a result electrons get out of step with oscillating electric field very quickly uncharged particles like neutrons cannot be accelerated by cyclotron let us discuss the limitations of the cyclotron mathematically when a positive ion is accelerated by the cyclotron it moves with greater and greater speed as the speed of the ion becomes comparable with that of light the mass of the ion increases according to the relation m equal to m0 upon square root of 1 minus v square by c square where m is the mass of the ion while moving with velocity v m0 is the rest mass of the ion and c is the speed of light now the time taken by the ion to describe semicircular path would be t equal to pi m0 upon b q into square root of 1 minus v square by c square it shows that as v increases t also increases it means the positive ion will take longer time to describe semicircular path than the time for half cycle of oscillating electric field because of it the ion would not arrive in the gap between the 2d's exactly at the same instant the polarity of the 2d's is reversed hence the positive ion would not be accelerated further ultimately the positive ion would be lost by colliding with the wall of the d's therefore the ion cannot move with a speed beyond a certain limit however one can overcome this problem by increasing b in such a way that the factor b into square root of 1 minus v square by c square remains constant it is clear that when v increases square root of 1 minus v square by c square decreases hence by adjusting b we can get the factor b into square root of 1 minus v square by c square as well as t to be a constant factor one can also overcome this problem by adjusting the frequency of electric field in such a way that the frequency of electric field would always remain equal to the frequency of the revolution of the charged particle in this condition cyclotron is called synchro cyclotron or frequency modulated cyclotron and the expression for the frequency becomes nu equal to bq upon 2 pi m0 into square root of 1 minus v square by c square is the nali asi aaj the lesson de ant te aa gaye han aaj the lesson nu khatam karan to pehla asi jo sikhya hai aao is nu summarize kar liye summary if a charged particle of charge plus q and mass m is moving with velocity v along x axis if a uniform electric field of strength e is acting along y axis then path of the charge in electric field is parabolic which is given as x square equal to 2m v square upon qe into y or x square is equal to ky similarly when the charge enters in a uniform magnetic field at an angle theta the charged particle in the magnetic field will be helical whose axis is 
parallel to the direction of magnetic field. The pitch of the helix is equal to Vx into T or V cos theta into 2 pi m by B cube. Whereas the force on charge in magnetic field is equal to Q into the cross product of vector V and vector B. However, in general, the force experienced by a charged particle moving in space where both electric and magnetic fields are present is called Lorentz force. Due to both the electric and magnetic fields, the total force vector F experienced by the charged particle is equal to Q into vector E plus vector V cross vector B. The cyclotron uses both electric and magnetic fields in combination to increase the energy of charged particles. If V0 and R0 are maximum velocity and maximum radius of the circular path followed by the positively charged particle in cyclotron, then V0 is equal to BQ R0 upon M. And Maximum kinetic energy of the particle is equal to B square Q square R0 square upon 2M. And the time period of revolution of the particle is equal to 2 pi M upon BQ. Cyclotron frequency or magnetic resonance frequency is nu equal to BQ upon 2 pi M. Cyclotron is suitable only for accelerating heavy particles like proton, deuteron, alpha particle, etc. Let me now ask you some questions just to boost up your confidence. My first question is, define Lorentz force. The answer is, due to both electric and magnetic fields, the total force, that is, Lorentz force experienced by the charged particle vector F is equal to Q into vector E plus Q into the cross product of vector V and vector B. Next question is, what is the path of an electron in uniform electric field? The answer is, in uniform electric field, path of an electron would be parabolic. Yet another question, what is the path of an electron in uniform magnetic field? The answer to this is, in uniform magnetic field, path of an electron would be circular. Yet another question, what is the path of an electron under the combined effect of electric and magnetic field? The answer, under the combined effect of electric and magnetic fields, path of an electron would be helical. Menu umid hai ki tusi sare magnetic force te concept ate cyclotron the construction ate working no changi tara samaj gaye ho voge. Aaj di class vich tiyan den lehi tuada tanwad. Agli class vich fair milan.